we can code. Isn't that fun? Okay. We're going to come back to Let's Mod Project, because this is where we're coding. If you're wondering what these uh, copying files are, these are files that come from gnu.org. These are the LGPL version 3 files. You can download them from there. Um, please read the website. I've gotten so many emails from people who are, can't find the way to download the text of the license. It's right there on the page when you read the LGPL page. When you look at the licenses, there's links there for how to download them. And it's just a right click save target as. It is incredibly easy to do. Rant over. Okay. Inside of the Let's Mod Common uh, folder here, you'll find uh, two packages right now. One of which is com.palmar.letsmod and a uh, lib package as well. You could also copy and paste from the EE GitHub. It is best to actually get it from the official source, though. And there's a MC mod info. So we're going to start with the Let's Mod class first. So this is your, and I uh, commented on this before, this is your at mod class. Uh, this is your main mod class. This is how Forge Mod Loader knows uh, what your mod is and what to load in. So in the past, there were all these different events here for um, pre-initialization, initialization, post-initialization. Post You'll notice that there's all these uh, warnings. In the change from 1.5 to 1.6, Minecraft that is, um, Forge changed how uh, the at mod class is structured. So these uh, these at pre init and at init, these annotations are now deprecated. That's why there's a line through them. So we'll get to that in a moment. We're going to start from the top because I'm all over the place again. At mod, that annotation at the top of your class file identifies for Forge, Forge mod loader relevant information uh, in terms of uh, your mod. So if you double click on this and you go to open declaration, it'll actually take you to the source for the uh, the at mod annotation. So here you can see all the different things you can set. And you can set the mod ID, the name, the version, dependencies, etc. If you want to see different versions of uh, how people use this, you can always look at their class. So for example, equivalent exchange 3. You'll see here, this is my at mod line. So here I've set the mod ID the name, the version, what it's dependent on, and as well you can set a, uh, a fingerprint on the uh, on the mod. Basically it kind of signs it as um, as you were the one to compile it, so we're not going to worry about uh, signing your jars until a later lecture. For now you'll notice that I'm reference, I'm, uh, the values of this I'm actually referencing from a reference class that's uh, this reference library. So right now the mod ID is let's mod, the mod name is let's mod, and the version is 001. That's where we let off, left off last time. So what do we replace these deprecated annotations? Um, why these are important in the first place are there's specific stages that a mod goes through as it's being loaded into Minecraft. Uh, if you want to see all those different stages, you can always look inside of the CPW mods FML common event package inside of uh, the Minecraft project. So these are all the different events that uh, can occur inside of um, Forge, uh, Forge Mod Loader. The ones you're going to worry about predominantly are going to be um, FML pre-initialization event, initialization event, and post-initialization event. Other ones that can be helpful for you are um, server starting and server started. I'm not giving the full name, just the short name. As well as there's intermod comms, we'll cover intermod communications in another lecture, as well as this uh, fingerprint violation event. So. To fix these warnings, the new one 
the the new annotation you want to add on is event handler. No, it's not that. Or is it? Okay, it is event handler. I just need the error there was uh, that I needed to import the class. Uh, handy key uh, key combination for Eclipse users. If you want to automatically resolve imports, Control Shift O. And that was my dog groaning. I'm apparently very entertaining. I hope you guys find me entertaining. So once again, event handler and event handler. So let's see, I am now down to four warnings. I'm going to clean up the uh, imports, save, and now I'm down to no warnings. So, as a very skeletal uh, at mod class, this is now working for Minecraft 1.6. Any questions? This is where we left off with the uh, the YouTube series before I did Dev Environment 3.0. Um, we have the idea of a reference class as well as we have our at mod, mod class. Uh, the next thing I was going to get into in the YouTube series, so I might as well start here, is uh, the idea of the different sides of Minecraft and the use of um, proxy classes. So before I carry on, I'd like to open it up to Twitch chat to see if there's any questions. doesn't seem like there's any questions, so I'm going to move on. Okay. So, a little history here. Minecraft 125 and earlier, there was two distinct code bases for Minecraft. There was a single player, SSP, a single survival single player, and there was survival multiplayer SMP. And because of the two different code bases, uh, it was very challenging for mod developers to do um, multiplayer uh, mods. RIP headphone users. Okay, so Minecraft 125 and earlier, they had two separate code bases for single player and multiplayer. The great mod update from Minecraft 125 to 132 uh, was the merge of single player and multiplayer into a common code base. Every uh, single player session actually runs in a local server session. Um, and that might, I don't know if I explained that clearly, but essentially what happens is from 1, 3, 2 onwards, every time you play single player, you are playing a local Minecraft server. So you're connecting to a local Minecraft server. That's why you have the ability of opening up your single player world uh, to multiplayer inside of your um, LAN network. That also meant um, that when it comes to coding, a lot of the code became common, with the exception of client specific code like uh, GUIs, um, mouse and keyboard input, textures, etc. Because the server doesn't need to carry it, but uh, to care about textures, um, to collecting uh, direct input, uh, game input from the user, like what keys they're hitting the mice and uh, mouse input and whatnot. Uh, a lot of that is handled by the client. Uh, basically, anything that's displayed to the user, that is um, that is client based. So, 
in order to address uh, common functions um, that have different outcomes between the client and local server, uh, Minecraft CPW entered um, the idea of proxy classes. So it might be good just to look at one and how we declare it. So I'm going to load up the, uh, the equivalent exchange 3 one. To declare a uh, proxy, you just need to talk about the, uh, you need to add a at sided proxy annotation, so a sided proxy annotation into your uh, at mod class. You need to specify the client side and the server side. Client side, this is just a, uh, a string that actually points uh, to the fully qualified name for the proxy. So. I have the client proxy class as being inside of com.pomar.ee3.core.proxy.clientproxy. That's this class right here. The common proxy is the one that works for both. So this is uh, the common proxy is uh, usually safe to, um, that's the one you'd set the server proxy. And here that is. Any questions before I go further? I know this is going kind of quickly, and it will make sense when uh, when we actually see it in practice. The Tarig, you have a question. Tarek, we'll, we'll talk about that after, uh, so to Tarek's having some problems with uh, libraries. Uh, Marini Piro has a question about, uh, you write almost everything on the common proxy. Uh, the common proxy is uh, usually mostly empty classes, like what you're seeing here. So um, you'll see I have a method here, a void method for registering a keybinding handler. There's nothing that happens in here. The reason for it is you'll have the client proxy extend the common proxy in most cases. You don't have to do it this way. You can actually have a true server one that's very distinct from a client. I do it this way. I have my client proxy extend my common proxy because then I'm only calling this function on both sides of the code. And when I'm in the client, it knows that it needs to run this overridden version. So what that means is this is using Java uh, inheritance. From the server point of view, it calls this function and nothing happens. But if I'm the client and I call this function, because of this class, the client class extends the common class, and I've overridden that function, it runs this code. Does that make sense? Okay, that's why these proxy classes are, are um, good to have because when they're called on the server, they don't do anything. Uh, but when they're called in the client, they can do things. So it's a way to conditionally run code. And you don't have to worry about, um, you don't have to worry about s checking to see if you're on the client when you do it this way. You just call the code and Forge Mod Loader handles it for you. If you're on the client, it runs this. It's very, very simple that way. So you see here, that uh, I have an instance of those classes. So we're going to create our proxy classes for Let's Mod. So I'm going to add new classes to Let's Mod. I'm going to put them in the proxy package. So com pahmar Let's Mod proxy. We're going to have common proxy. And you can see here, you really don't need to add anything to it to start with. This is actually going to be empty right from the get-go. Don't worry about this implements iGUI handler. That's what you need when you're uh, doing GUIs when we're not at that point yet. So here we go. We have a common proxy class. Right from the get-go, this is where you'd start with. 
Now we're going to add another new class. It's in the same package, com pahamar let's mod proxy. It's going to be called client proxy. And its super class is common proxy. Common proxy, com pahamar let's mod proxy. So now we have a new class, client proxy, that extends common proxy. Guess what, folks? All we need to do is add them into uh, the Let's Mod mod class, and that's what we need to start with proxies. So we'll say uh, private, uh, I think it's public. Yep, public static common proxy proxy. Do I initialize it? I know I did that somewhere. Sorry, it's been a while since I've actually had to uh, had to start this from scratch. Yeah, that's it. I don't even have to initialize it. So there's the declaration for it, and I need to add the sided proxy annotation. Client side equals server side equals. So the fully qualified name for it is com uh, com dot pahamar dot let's mod dot proxy and for the client side it is client proxy for the server side it is pahamar let's mod proxy common proxy and if you see these errors about it uh, Basically, you see the squiggly lines, it means an error, and you can mouse over and say it can't be resolved to a type. So this is where we do our control shift O to handle the import. There we go. We now have two empty proxy classes. Also, if I actually reference the let's mod ones. So we have an empty common proxy and an empty client proxy. And we have made the let's mod mod file aware of them. We will add to these proxy files as we work down uh, mod development of this mod. Uh, as we find things we need to execute differently between the server and the client, that's when you add to the uh, the proxy. My Rathi is in chat uh, letting me know that the annotation initializes the proxy itself. So this line right here initializes that for us. And I think while I'm here, we might want to set up our instance uh, here as well. I don't believe that uh, needs. Yeah, same deal. Okay. So, what we've gone over now, just uh, in the last uh, ten minutes or so, is the idea of the uh, the sides of Minecraft and uh, why proxies are useful for executing code differently um, between common, uh, sorry, the server and the client. Now we are going to add a instance. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm going to throw it to chat to see if they can tell me what the instance is useful for. Because uh, I'm kind of vague on it, because it's been a long time since I've had to use it. So my Rathi, I'm looking at you, throwing you on the spot. YouTube history. that I will commonly look at other projects um, that I've done before. So you can see it's a static uh, variable of the type of the mod class. My Rathi is typing, Jada Cat tells me. Oh, I got a leading space. Another one there. Get rid of those. Code style. So my Rathi tells me that the, uh, the instance annotation initializes the field it's annotating with the instance of the class instantiated by FML. Uh, basically, uh, what I'm going to say uh, for the 99% of people is uh, it's a good thing to have. So you're going to want to do that.
So, I'm going to throw it open to questions because now we've handed, uh, handled sides and proxies. Any questions? Oh yes, I do remember now. By providing a default mod ID to the annotation, you can control which mod instance it places into the field. My Rathy tells me. Um, there's a couple instances that this is useful for. Um, I'm going to stick with my line though that it's good to have uh, from the get-go. I'll explain it more later, uh, in later episodes. So. Mr. Kirby, uh, we'll talk about um, import problems you're having with the Equivalent Exchange 3 project um, offline. I have a feeling that uh, hey, your directory structure is just wrong. So we'll look at that later. So let's see, do I want to talk, cover one more small topic before wrapping up this lecture? Um, I know a lot of people want to go into um, how do you add a block? How do you add an item? How do you add textures and whatnot? Um, the approach I'm, I'm taking with this series, uh, like I started from the get-go with YouTube, is to start this from the ground up, um, to handle laying out a good foundation for your mod that you can easily add to. And uh, the silence is just me reading Twitch chat. Doesn't seem like there's any uh, questions for this particular thing. So, um, one of the things we don't have, I believe we don't have. So you notice here now we have um, two more classes: uh, reference library and the mod class. But if you look at all these other ones, they have a resources directory. Resources. Resources. Minecraft uh, basically looks for things in uh, when it comes to resources. So resources are things like I'll, uh, I'll zip along. So um, resources are things like uh, localizations, um, translations, uh, textures. You know what's a block texture look like, etc. Pardon me. So I don't believe we set that up with the Let's Mod project yet. I zip along. So yeah, we have a comment folder. We don't have a resources folder. So uh, I will show you what Minecraft 1.6 expects for a resources folder. So first, it will look for resources. Inside of that, there is an assets folder. Inside of this, it looks for lang for localizations and textures for textures. Inside of textures, I believe it is just items and blocks. And I'm going to reference, once again, because I always do, because I've done it before, I'm going to reference the EE3 stuff. So you notice here, resources, there's assets. Oh, this is what I forgot. So inside of the assets folder, the next folder, I'll get rid of these, has to be a folder with the name of your mod ID. So if we look at our code, wherever that window is, there we go. For some reason it's not showing up. We have set our mod ID to let's mod. And I'm actually going to lowercase this for now. So let's mod is our mod ID. So when we load up these values again, uh, these windows again, we're now going to have a let's mod folder. What this is important for is since Minecraft 1.6, um, everyone's textures and everything um, are all found inside of their mod domain, which is determined by their mod ID. So all textures related to EE3, Minecraft will look for them inside of a assets EE3 folder. So for let's mod, it's going to look in an assets let's mod folder. Inside of here is where you will find your lang directory and your textures directory. Now you noticed equivalent exchange 3 has two other directories in here, models and sound. Minecraft will not automatically load these files. However, 
Minecraft will automatically load language files, so dot .langs, that match a localization if they are inside of the mods lang folder. Similarly, Minecraft will automatically load textures, and I'll show you which one specifically, if they are found in the mods, textures, blocks, or items directories. All these other ones that I happen to have here, effects, GUI, logo, models, XCF, Minecraft won't automatically load these. The file structure that you will find inside of Let's Mod is the one that Minecraft will look for these things. In another episode, uh, when we actually get into adding a block and adding an item, I will show you how to set the texture on um, your item and block and uh, how it uh, will be found inside of here. So this structure here, so resources, assets, the mod ID folder, so let's mod in this case, if you happen to have, uh, let's say your mod ID is um, it's industrial craft 2, so your mod ID is IC2, so this folder would see IC2, then inside of that you'd find lang, textures, blocks, items, etc. So. Any questions when it comes to the folder structure of assets in Minecraft 1.6? Matt H asks, don't you have to use the language registry to register the languages after, rather than them being loaded already by MC? In uh, Minecraft 1.5, uh, Forge Mod Loader had a language registry to handle translations. Uh, in Minecraft 1.6, Mojang, Mojang added support for loading uh, translations uh, natively. So as a result, the language registry is in the process of being deprecated and will be removed. It's actually much easier to do it this way. Uh, and in a later lecture, I'll show you how to do your own um, translations. It's very simple. I was actually able to simplify a lot of my translations this way. Um, however, it did put an undue burden on uh, on my lovely translators. Uh, case sensitivity is still going to be an issue in uh, one six. Um, to err on the side of caution when it comes to uh, folders and your mod ID, uh, go lowercase. Uh, that question came from Iamaz, uh, who asked, I've noticed errors with case sensitivity pre-1.6 for folder structure. Is that still the case in 1.6? So once again, um, err on the side of totally lower case, because uh, case sensitivity is still an issue. I'm just trying to find out if there's any other questions from Twitch chat. Uh, happy to see that uh, Tatarig uh, has uh, quite possibly fixed his issue. You, uh, so the question coming from Twitch chat from Bosfer is, how do you update MCP when it's a subfolder in Forge? You do not have to update MCP. Uh, Forge will always come with a, uh, a good version of MCP. Uh, even if you were to put in MCP, a newer version of MCP in there, Forge will override it. So don't worry about it. Uh, just, uh, just set it up like I showed earlier. So if there are no other questions, I'm going to wrap this up because we've been going for about 90 minutes now. Um, I'm going to try and do these at least once a week. I'm finding, um, and hopefully Twitch is finding this as well. Um, it's a little bit easier to have the audience interaction. Um, it's a little bit more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a little easier to interact and to answer questions on the fly. Uh, just bear in mind, I'm going to be a little scatterbrained at times. Uh, that's just who I am. Uh, it's the price to pay uh, for all this lovely, lovely information if I'm going to be so arrogant and 
blah, 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 blah. I'm being told to make a getaway quick. <laughs> okay, so. Um, next time, uh, I think I'm going to get into... Let's see, what do I want to get into? Hmm. Well, let's see. Let's use a good example. Let's use a good example. Okay, so... Ah, uh, let's see. How about next time we get into the idea of how to make how to log? Uh, so this would be how to add your own entries to the Forge Mod Loader uh, log. That happens every time uh, uh, you start up Minecraft. And uh, I'll show you briefly how to set up your own configuration files. And then uh, why don't we look at uh, hmm. Maybe we'll do how to do a, uh, a network mod. Yeah, that sounds good. So next time, we are going to talk about how to do uh, logging, how to set up configuration files, and how to set up um, your mod for multiplayer. The multiplayer is probably going to be the lion's share of, the, of that lecture. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, I'm hoping to do this again um, within the next seven days, but if it doesn't happen, please don't crucify me. Uh, life is busy. Um, we could be doing this as soon as tomorrow night, but I will put up uh, notice uh, to let everyone know. So once again, thanks everyone, and uh, take it easy.